What is good, family? What is good, family? It's your boy Urban Sports Guru. Let me give me y'all. Let me give y'all my picks for NFL Week 16. We're gonna start us off tomorrow, Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. With the Cleveland Browns going to Green Bay to play the Packers. Now, Cleveland at full strength going to Green Bay to play the Packers. I don't like that game. But with everybody they got in COVID protocol. It makes me really, really not like this game. Uh, Packers are given seven and a half. I expect that line to get worse depending on who else gets added to COVID protocol. The way COVID is right now, Packers might end up getting people added to it. Who the hell knows? But things staying the same, I think the Packers win by two touchdowns. That's just me. I like Aaron Rodgers over anybody on Cleveland, especially over Baker Mayfield. I'm taking the Packers. Then we got what's going to be a really good game tomorrow. We have the Colts going to Arizona. What the Colts do well travels. They have the best all line in the game. Tackle to tackle. They can run the football right down your throat. They can protect the quarterback. As long as Costa Wentz doesn't do dumb shit. Their defense makes you go the length of the field. And one thing I don't like about, about Kyler Murray in that Arizona office, they have to rely on Kyler Murray making, doing big plays. Yes, they're running the ball better. That's what you have to do against Indy. You have to try to pound a run at them. And so Indy has some success. A lot of teams have some success. Do that if you're able to pound it right at them. But you're not going to get big plays over the top. Not really. And Kyler Murray, Arizona, they are really reliant on those big plays because Kyler Murray can do that. He makes big plays. You know, he's a special talent. When you go against that kind of thing, you kind of like watching them. Um, they play a lot of Tampa too. When you watch the Tampa two, the originators of it, no, they were the Pittsburgh Steelers. But then you look at the um, Tampa Bay teams in the early two thousands. They didn't give up big plays. They did not give up big plays. They forced you to go the length of the field. And when you have a great, and when you have a a good front, they had a great front that can be decent against the run and get after the quarterback. Colts have a decent front who could be all right against the run and get after the quarterback. I think that's going to be problematic for Arizona. Their weaknesses are being exposed at the worst part of the year. And they're a good football team, but I like Indianapolis. <laughs> we have Detroit. We have Detroit against Falcons. Detroit last week played how I told you it was going to play. Then you have the Falcons, who have been playing well. Well, decent. I can't even say well. Um, I think Alter Smith is getting the most he can out of Atlanta. He's getting the most out of them. It's just there's not a whole lot there, left there. This is not the team that went to the Super Bowl. There's not all of that talent that was there. So, um, I mean, just looking at Detroit, I expect this to be a close game, but I expect Atlanta to pull it out late. And we have Baltimore at Cincy. Cincy is the most talented team top to bottom in that division um Lamar Jackson may be playing in this game and the reason why you're seeing things with Hud Hudley the backup quarterback he's seizing things faster than Lamar Jackson I've been like a broken record about this um Lamar Jackson's not seeing things fast enough he's not seeing things fast enough in the pocket he just isn't the backup Hudley Hudley whatever I'm fucking up his name he's seeing things faster He's not the better quarterback than Lamar, but he's seeing things faster. And because of that, they're scoring more points. They're turning over the ball less. Offense is moving more. Lamar Jackson playing from the pocket. He has to show that he can do this consistently without turning the ball over. And going against Sissy, that can pressure the quarterback. Going against Sissy, that's already walked in there and embarrassed them early in the year. You think all of a sudden Sissy's not going to be able to do this now at home? I like Sissy. Um, we have the Rams, who's playing better football at home against Minnesota. Minnesota is playing for their playoff lives, and the Rams seem to be, they're not playing great football, but they're playing better football, and they seem to be getting it right, figuring out how to use all these new toys they have on offense and in defense. Um, the problem with the Rams is what happens when you play against a team that's going to be physical and pound the ball straight at you. And one of the things that, of course, Minnesota can do well is pound the rock. 
Now, Cook is in COVID protocols. He may not be playing, so that would be a help for the Rams. And if he's not playing, that makes me really, really like the Rams in this game. Really like the Rams in this game. Because what they can do with Jalen Ramsey, you can neutralize Justin Jefferson. I believe Adam Thielen is injured. You can neutralize Kirk Cousins that way. Moving forward, I like the Rams in this game. And you have Buffalo at New England. Um, Roster-wise, like I said, Buffalo has a much better roster. Much more explosive. But the Patriots are a better team. Now, they went in there, and in my opinion, they embarrassed them in Buffalo. This is going to be a much different game weather-wise. New England has to get back to doing to what they do well. You know, one thing, New England, you can get physical on defensively and pound the rock at them. The thing is, Buffalo doesn't run the football well at all. They want to stay in there and chuck it all day. You want to stay in there and chuck it all day. You think Bill Belichick is not going to at least force you into a couple of mistakes? I expect it to be a close game. I expect Buffalo to make certain plays later in the game that they did not make in Buffalo. Two evenly matched teams. And I think Buffalo will get the split. They'll get this win. Jacksonville at the Jets. Two really bad teams. Don't really know what direction each of them are going in. Um, do I have to make a pick? I guess I'll take Jacksonville because I like their quarterback better. I think he has a better upside. We have my sorry-ass Giants. Yes, they beat Philly in Philly at home, but not in Philly. Giants never won in Philly. And now you're doing this with the backup. You bench. I mean, I mean, I mean, you parked your starting quarterback for the rest of the year. Like he's somebody who's worth getting parked. <sighs> I mean, when, where did you earn the right <laughs> oh, to save you for next year? You may not be here next year. <laughs> um. In Philly, they, I love what Philly's doing because they're zinging what everyone else is zagging. They're running the football. And very unapologetic about it. They're going to run the football. Um, Jalen Hurts is not the typical quarterback, but he's a playmaker. They'll, he'll make enough plays and they'll beat my Giants. Tampa, they lost a lot of plays. But this is a get-right game against Carolina because they don't even know what the hell they're doing at quarterback. Cam came back to Carolina. Everybody felt good. But at the end of the day, Cam is playing horrible. He has somewhat of an excuse because he wasn't there during training camp, blah, blah, blah. But Cam's playing horrible. Sam Darrow's playing horrible. They fired Joe Brady. You don't know what the fuck they're doing. They really don't. So uh, Tampa got a get-right game. We have the Chargers at Houston. Chargers get, get a get-right game at Houston. I don't care what the spread is. Chargers going to cover it. We got the Bears at Seattle. Two underachieved teams. Two underachieved teams. Two, two teams that are trying to find their way. But they're moving in different directions. Bears at least has optimism for the future. Seattle doesn't have optimism because I don't see Russell Wilson being there next year. Nobody does. Then we have Pittsburgh at Kansas City. Pittsburgh at Kansas City. This was normally a game that Pittsburgh would always beat them because for years they would just pound the rock with Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell would touch the ball 30 times and they would get the better of him. This ain't that same Pittsburgh team. Kansas City, once again, they've been playing better defensively. But what's scary about them is the fact of what's scary about them is the fact that their offense still hasn't gotten all the way back. Their offense can go all the way back because one thing Pittsburgh's not doing there. They're not rushing. They're not defending the run. Kansas City doesn't run the ball a lot. But if Kansas City can get this right, and we got to see, Kelsey's not playing. If Hill's not playing, this could be a much more interesting game. Much more interesting game. A game that Pittsburgh could possibly pull out. Then we have Denver at the Raiders. Division game. Denver at the Raiders, a division game. Um... Raiders walked into Cleveland, pulled out a game that they needed. And the fact, people got to give Derek Carr his, his respect. With everything that's gone on in Las Vegas this year, the fact that he has this team 7-7 seven and seven 
in the playoff hunt. And if they win this winnable game, they'll be eight and seven. And the majority of that is courtesy of Derek Carr. You got to start putting some respect on this man's name. I'm just saying. I like the Raiders. Washington at Dallas. I think Dallas will win at home. The offense is sucking. I don't think expect them to cover the 10 points, but Dallas will win this game at home because their defense is damn good. Michael Parsons is an animal. They have so many great pass rushers. They'll, they'll win this game based off their defense alone. Monday night, we have Miami at New Orleans. It's funny because Tua was looked at as the new, new Drew Brees and going against New Orleans with Sean Payton. Tua has been playing very well. Dolphins won six games in a row. Saints don't even know who they start in their quarterback. Miami's given two and a half. I think that's actually a safe bet. I think that's actually a safe bet. The one saving grace that New Orleans has. You still have Alvin Kamara. No matter who the quarterback is, y'all going to be giving him the ball 30 times. That'll keep the game interesting, but I like Miami moving forward. Those are my picks. It's your boy, Yorma Sports Guru. I'm out. Salute.